Alright everyone, hello, it's Paul Hernandez, and we are here at Sideshow's booth, and I am so happy to be joined by the incredible, the legendary, J. Scott Campbell. How are you doing, sir? Oh, thank you, Paul. I'm, I'm super thrilled to be here. This is so great. Comic-Con's back. I mean, uh, how exciting is this? It it's is. A, we've been how, so patient, but it's I back now. I know. How does it feel to be back? Like, it's I, exciting. In some ways, it feels like it never left, and in other right. ways, you're like, oh, I kind of think I remember how this goes. <laughs> it's, it's a mix of all emotions, but it, it's all good. I mean, this is exciting. I mean, I've been coming to Comic-Con. I'd say, oh my gosh, I'm mean, probably around 20 years at this point. So 20 years. Yeah, and probably the last, like I would say, uh, 15 Comic Cons in a row. So it's I, oh, I'm, okay. I'm I'm definitely a uh, veteran of the Comic Con scene. So it's you great sure to be are back. any fun rituals that your fans might be surprised to find out? Like you go to the same coffee shop. Yeah, every it's day. that's exactly the first thing <laughs> I came up. I, I uh, there's a particular little coffee thing called the Roast Coach. I love their coffee. Oh, I look forward okay. to it every year. It's on sixth. Good coffee. All right. Uh, I do have a little bit of rituals. Not not as many. I'm, they're sort of coming back to me because obviously right. we're a little rusty. But uh, yeah, you got to have your little uh, habits when you come here. Absolutely. Now, while the, all the pandemic was going on, and you know, like you said, we are back now. You never stopped working. You are so busy, and you've been so busy not only on your own right, but right. with us as well. Yes. Specifically with what we're seeing behind us. Yes. I mean, yes. just from Let's the fairy, look at the fairy tale fantasies question. Could you please, you know, maybe for a brief intro really yes. quickly let people know what is your idea what's the concept behind why you wanted to bring these to 3d well that's uh, it's a great question paul i think basically uh at the core of the fairy tale fantasies line is my love of the 1960s era pinup calendars the ones that used to kind of hang up in like mechanic shops i think kind of it's an era okay. that's kind of come and gone but i wanted to kind of bring back that sort of vintage feel but with a fantasy twist right so there's always like a little bit of a peekaboo playful good girl kind of like like sexy twist to these that's right. what gives it its uniqueness sets it apart from all uh, other versions you may have seen over the years so uh two that were in the works in for quite a while we've been talking about red riding hood i would say probably as far back as like maybe the original like two or three and and right. so it finally came time to, to do her and we we were to create the, the the statue again these are the fruits of the pandemic they, these are <laughs> these are all pretty much worked on during that period of time so yeah it's uh so that was the first one i think we put we really kind of got to work on right. after cinderella finally uh, of course was able to ship and uh yeah i just love how it came out it's 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 funny it's uh, you work on these and sometimes you don't get a sense of just how big they're going to be until you see them in person. I'm always, right. I'm always overwhelmed when I see them in person. I'm like, oh, that's how big they are. Like it's <laughs> like they're just they kind of really, especially with the uh, the the kind of creepy tree that's kind of circling oh, yeah. around her. When you really kind of get the sense of the circumference of it, 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 it makes the the base so much more dynamic. And that's it one does. of the things that not you know that we not only love about your work yes. in 2D but also in 3D is they are a collection but they all are so different that's what i love i mean I, I think that's what's fun about it is like you know some of them are standing some of them are smaller in scale like tinkerbell right. some are sitting the, in the mermaid she's kind of coming out of the water right. i like to create an environment like like so there's 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 almost like this staircase or this rhythm kind of to, to mm -hmm. all of them when you see them all together and i think the tallest piece we've ever done is the evil queen standing behind red riding hood and that's that's kind of nice that if you have a, if you happen to be fortunate enough to have the whole collection the queen almost like looks over her kingdom in a weird way as she so, should Good. Exactly. Right exactly. as she should. And again, a, a new uh, item that went up during Sideshow Con, again, in collaboration with the incredible J. Scott Campbell. And let's talk about this piece a little bit because it yeah. does have something unique to these. Is it yes. sort of a proximity piece? Yes. Uh, could you talk us through a little bit about your desire to bring a proximity piece to the Evil Queen herself? Yes. I mean, evil certain certain characters. You know, we have an envision of, of since childhood of what makes these characters read as a character that we've always known. Right. And the Evil Queen, I've always thought you got to have the mirror. The mirror is just like it's it's an identifiable trait. Right, right. Of, it's almost like part of the costume. Absolutely. So uh, I was really thrilled that uh, that Sideshow was willing to say yes. We we need to consider conceptualize this mirror this mirror has to be yes. an option as a proximity piece because uh it's it just creates that full story and i just i love it when somebody can look at the goal that's the evil queen that's right. of course it is there's the mirror the look at her look on her face so and that mirror was a lot of fun to create i mean i kind of feel like it could be a piece all on its own right especially because collectors of 3d statue work and yes. 2d work you know they are they all have their various hit list of what they would like to see. Right. And so it, it's got to be so incredible for fans of yourself and collections in general to know that you do think about if, oh, absolutely. if you were looking at this top down, that you would get the same experience and you would be absolutely. in that diorama and in that world. You know, sometimes usually in uh, the, the world of statues, especially if you're a 2D artist like me, when you do a turnaround, you usually do like three angles, sometimes mm -hmm. even two. I'll very often on these more recent ones like Red Riding Hood and the Evil Queen, 
I'll do sometimes as many as like four, five, even six angles because I just want to really get the full scope, the flow of the figure. Right. And in the case of the, the Evil Queen, I really love that it is a proximity piece because mm -hmm. the mirror is not fastened to the statue. You can take it away and still enjoy the Evil Queen Absolutely. as a figure on yeah. her own and then nudge the mirror back up when you want to sort of have that experience. But it's 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 great. You get the best of both worlds. You sure do. And speaking of being the best, like you are arguably one of the most recognizable artists. As far as <laughs> 2Ds, that. if you're in comics or yeah. if you're just in art collecting, right. could you talk about maybe some of the challenges that you had found previously, or maybe you still find when bringing your 2D work into 3D? Of course, well, that's the, the biggest challenge I think kind of is, uh, I mean, gosh, I, I mean, Sideshow's the best in the biz. Their sculpts or sculptors are like, I mean, you, you can only <laughs> wish to work with the Sideshow <laughs> sculptors. But my, one of the bigger challenges with me is I have a distinct style. And sometimes it's not just about getting a really great sculpt, it's about how can that sculpt still like showcase my flavor, my sort of like right. point of view. Your signature. And that's, I really appreciate that the sideshow sculptors are very patient with me because usually I'll go like, you know, that's a beautiful sculpt, but it doesn't look like a J. Scott Campbell sculpt. Yeah. And that's usually where I think uh, is the bigger challenge just to kind of get those like little isms. Like I have a certain right. way I like to do hands, certain proportions to the body, certain way the face and eyes are like to be. And they're very patient with me. And I think oh, the good. results show because I think the best compliment is when people, somebody walks by and goes, I knew that was your style right away, even in right. 3D. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the best. Uh, that's the best compliment you can get, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and you know, we appreciate it. And again, Sideshow yeah. does love working with J. Scott. And, Speaking of your work, I mean, there are so many here. I wanted to speak a little bit on, so we've got two variants here. We do, yes. We've got the Alice in Wonderland Game of Hearts edition, and of course, we've got the Tinkerbell fall variant. Before you bring it into a variant, for you, is it a new piece, or is the fall variant, let's say, of Tinkerbell, is it just like a, a you know, like a side plot in, right, one, right, in one of right. these fairy tales in your head. That's a great question. You know, the very first variant we ever did was for the mermaid. Right, yes. And uh, I can't say we put a ton of pre-thought into that one, but it was such a given that like, oh, mermaids come in so many colors and flavors. It wasn't a really huge lift to go, oh, we could change the tail, we could change the hair. Right. That came very natural. But after that, we did start pre-imagining while we were in the initial concept stages, what variations could be down the road. And uh, with Alice, a given that came right away was, oh my gosh, like a, a sort of what our original thought was a goth version or yeah, sort of like yeah. a bad girl version. But I kind of went up on that and said, wait a second, what's the one theme that you see throughout uh, Alice in Wonderland? It's the cards, the, 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 the red, black and white color scheme. And I was like, if we could keep it to those colors, I mean, there's variations, it's pink, there's some like, you know, kind of red shades, but for the most part, we wanted to keep it into this black, white, red, stick with those colors, and that's how we ended up with the uh, the Game of Hearts edition. I couldn't be happier. She also has like a little bit of a paler skin, a little bit of a smokier right. eye, and a little bit of freckling that the other one didn't have, again, just to give her that pale uh, sort of a, a skin tone. And I just love how it came out. It almost looks like it's, I, we were trying to go for it in the paint, what it would look like if it was a moonlit lighting scenario. Oh, I see, yeah. So like, it's you like kind of dynamic get the, lighting on yeah, it. Yeah, so like her skin tones and her uh, the white of the cat and everything, they almost have a moonlit kind of look versus yeah. like the original Alice, which definitely had a daytime, maybe like afternoon, spring Absolutely, look. Absolutely, yeah. I, you know, and I wouldn't have known. So, yeah. yeah, I know it from, from uh, Jay Scott's mouth himself. Now we I, put a lot of thought into this. Sure I mean, do. And, and I love that the, the the I mean, gosh, the, talking about the sculptors, I got to talk about the paint team at, oh. at Sideshow. My goodness, the best in the business. Uh, I'm always blown out that my favorite stage is when it comes out of the paint and we can <laughs> see it. I mean, I'm always just my jaw hits the floor every time, and, and this is certainly no exception. So oh. one other thing too that about I'll mention too is. Her arms were changed out from having two pieces of the mushroom to actual oh, okay. playing cards to, again, play up that theme of, right. like, the, the the game of hearts, so. Oh, I mean, they look incredible, as do the entire line. Thank you so much. Scott, we know you're busy, and we know you've got so <laughs> I love much being to do. Here, though. I could talk about these all day, as you can probably tell, but no, it's a thrill to be here. I really he, appreciate you He said that here. on camera. One day we're going to get them all day. Hey, you know we're what? Gonna I, I, I got I to gotta do it now. I put, put my... Um, uh, so before we let you go, yes. you know, this isn't really a question. We would just of like course. to know if there's anything. You have so many fans out there who now collect your 2D work and of your course. 3D work. Yeah. Is there anything that you'd like to say to them about what you would like them to know when they bring this into their collection? I just want you to know we have, uh, there's more to come. We oh. cannot We cannot wait to show you what's coming down the line. There's there's more to come. We're working away on the next uh, several figures. Uh, not to mention I have uh, more 2D art for this very same collection coming your way in uh, 2000, well, uh, later this year and uh, into next year. So so keep an eye out for that. And the statues, we hope to keep them going for quite a while. So oh, very well. exciting. 
Jason, thank you so Thanks much so much, for Paul, being absolutely. here. So we no, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're at the booth, come check us out. Come see all of J. Scott Campbell's Fairytale Fantasies collection here, please. And if not, Sideshow.com. Most of them are for pre-order. The Evil Queen is currently rsvp would so if you rsvp would for that, it, you will get notified when she is up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. And don't forget to let your geek sideshow. <laughs> Bye, everyone.